Hello, my name is uh, Jeremiah Christopher, I'm the teacher of geography. Okay, the last period, my dear student, we have been discussed about uh, the population's policies. We see the different countries that have their own policies that they applied in order to control the population within their country. For example, we see China is among the countries that have its population policy in order to control the population like there is family planning program applied in China. For example, of the one child policy that is practiced in China. Okay, but today now we are going to see population control in United Kingdom. Today we are going to see the population control in United Kingdom. In Britain is the home of industrial revolution, as we know that in Britain is a, is a country that where industrial revolution took place. Hence, it witnessed a high natural increase in population between the year of 1760 up to 1880. This economic prosperity led to the decline of death rate since there was an improvement in medical care. As we know that after the industrial revolution took place, the different sectors were improved in the Britain. So the, those sectors that were improved is like in medical care, improved sanitation and water supply. So through the improvement of these all sectors, the number of deaths tend to decrease, to decrease and number of deaths tend to increase. Okay, so. Let's just now proceed to see. From the year of 1880 to date, base control programs were introduced to us to slow down population increase. So, in Britain, during these years, they come up with the ideas on how they can control the populations within their country. The base rates were kept low through family planning, there is application of different policies that were applied in Britain in order to control the population, like family planning, which introduced the use of contraceptives, saturnizations and abortion. There are different methods that were used in order to control the family. For example, the use of contraceptives, these were applied in order to control the populations also Abortion also are uh, encouraged in order to control the populations. So those are among of the methods that the countries of Britain used. And the government incentives for smaller families. Lower birth rates were also due to the influence of increased industrial and mechanization, which led to the influence of increased industrial and mechanization, which led to the need of fewer laborers. Increased desire for the maternal Possessions. So we see that here in Britain there are the different strategies that were used in order to control the populations. Okay, let us now see the impact of, control, of base control. The following are the impacts of the base control. Uh, that the population is urgent considered of old people and fewer young people. So since they control the base, the numbers of people who engaged in the group of urgent tend to be high compared to those of the young. The young tend to be fewer and those who are of the engaged in the urgent group tend to be high. The urgent of the population will later be become problem as we know that if the population structure of the certain country, if the the the, 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 the if the, 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 the area where there is a large number of aging people automatically there is a shortage of manpower since there is since there is large number of old people compared to young so they will not able to engage in the productive activities like agriculture. Okay, let's just now see population and resources as is, I said earlier that you can't separate population and resources are two things that go together. Each one tend to connect to each other. So 
as we said, is that population in fact the total number of people in the certain areas and the resources, uh, those natural things that are made by God, for example, so water bodies, minerals, and etc. So let us now see the relationship between the population and the resources. Population and the resources are so interrelated since they both affect each other. Population can affect the resource and the resource also can affect the populations. Human life depends on the ability of the resources to sustain it and the human has some impact on the existence of sustainability of the resources. As we know that the lives of human beings depending on the available resource in order to ensure the perpetuations of their lives. So, the number of people, distribution of population, the structure of population, the ability of the resources to sustain it and the technique of production used as, to, as a so important aspect when considering the population and the resource relationship. So, we see now here there is a big relationship between population and the resource since Population depends on resource and resource depends on population, so you can't separate it from each other. So, on this basis, the area can be said to be having optimum population or overpopulation or underpopulations. Here, we are going to see that the population and the resources on this basis can be said to be either optimum population or overpopulation or underpopulation. Optimum population is that kind of population in which there is a balance between available resources and the number of people. While the area that is the overpopulation, we mean that here the population tend to be higher compared to the available resource. While underpopulation is that area where there is a small number of people. So, this depends on the extent to which the resources are used and the way in which they are used. So, let's just now see one after another. By beginning with the optimum population, it is the population in which the number of the people is in balance with the available resources. As, as I said earlier, my dear students, that optimum population is that kind of population in which there is a balance between available resources and the number of the people in the certain area. So, if there is a balance between the population and the number of people in a certain area, that is called the optimum populations. In these states, when the population is working, is working with all the resources, there will be the highest per capita economic returns. As we know, that is the, the highest per capita, per capita economic returns will occur if there is a balance between the available resources and the number of the people. That is the highest standard of living and the quality of life. So, if even if the if there is an optimum population, even the standard of life of people will be good because there is a balance between available resources and number of the people. So, the resources tend to feed the lives of people since people will engage into the different activities. So, that is the optimum populations. So. Optimum population can be maintained if the exploitation of new resources or development of other forms of employment keep pace with the increase in population. So, this kind of population can be maintained when the exploitation of resources or development of other forms of employment keep pace with the increase in population. Here we're going to see means that there is where if the population tend to increase automatically, the, 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 that place, they should be ensure that there is a balance between those two sides. <laughs> yes, if the population become too large, the lower of diminishing returns start to operate. So, if the population tend to be large, automatically the resources that are found in certain places will be shortage since they did not fulfill the demands of the people who are living at the that area. Another is overpopulation. Overpopulation occurs where there are too many people in relation to the resources and technology locally available to maintain in adequate standard of living. Overpopulation, as I said earlier, that here is where there is large number of people compared to the resources. That means that 
at a certain country or at a certain place. The population tend to be high while the resources tend to be shortage. So there is no balance between resources and the number of the people as we see in optimum population where well, there is balance between resources and the and the number of people. So this overpopulation is, is, is where there is a large number of people compared to the resources. So, for example, Ethiopia, part of China, Brazil and India are said to be overpopulated as they have insufficient food, mineral and energy resources to sustain their population. And these overpopulations tend to occur to the areas that is developed. For example, China. China have a large number of people because they there is availability of enough resource which lead to the improvement of different sectors like minerals, energy resources, efficient food that fulfill the demand of people for their life. So they often suffer from localized natural disasters such as drought and famine. Those level as you see as you see that there is the occurrence of disasters on those countries that developed like China. Those kind of disasters include drought and famines, also flood, earthquake and, and etc. Those are the kind of disasters that tend to face those developed countries. They are characterized by low incomes, poverty, poor living conditions and, and often high level of immigration. The, Immigration tend to occur since people tend to enter to those countries for searching of different jobs to engage the, there. So, our population is called by the high birth rate and the immigration. These are the two things that is, that is caused the overpopulation to occur. If there is a high birth rate, the number of people will tend to increase. But in the place where there is a high, where there is a high death rate automatically the population tend to decrease but the overpopulation is caused by the places of high birth rate at a certain place the number of people who are produced at a certain time so another is immigration as i said immigration for example if the persons come from kenya to tanzania here that is the immigration so immigration is among the factor that cause the, the occurrence of overpopulation This overpopulation and immigration depend on the factors like availability of resources like fertile land and the mineral deposit. So people who engage into those different activities like agriculture, if there is a fertile land, automatically people will engage in the agriculture. So high birth rate depends on the availability of fertile land which will make people to engage in agriculture, availability of resources which will make people to engage in different activities like mining, sea, and etc. Among the society of regarding that is big number of children is prestige or assurance of labor. So the population tend to be overpopulated as a, as a certain area because there is some of the people who believe that having the large number of children is prestige for them or assurance for labor. They believe that when, when they have the large number of children, they will get labor who will engage into different activities in the future. Outbreak of war is neighboring areas, improved healthy services also. The population at a certain place tend to be high if the health service is well organized to fulfill the demands of those people who are living under a certain country. Okay, let us now see the, what are the effects of overpopulation, what kind of outcomes that occur if the areas have the large number of people. Pressure for resources, large number of people place strain or resources like land leading to the land fragmentation, mineral and forest causing exhaustion and hence slowing down of the development. This is among of the effect that will take place if the population is high. Since the, the resources tend to be exhausted, for example, minerals exhaustion will take place. Also, the shortage of land also will become the problem since there is no balance between available resources like those land or forest and the number of the people. So if there is a high number of people in a certain area, 
this kind of the problem will take place. Another is unemployment. For example, the government will, will, will not be able to handle, to employ all people into different sectors because there is no balance between the economics and the, the numbers of people. So many people will be unemployed. So too many people cannot be absolutely absorbed in the economic sectors and hence a big number of people remains jobless. This is because the government did not have the, have the ability of to employ the large number of people. So many people will remain jobless and this is due to the impact of having the large number of people. Immigration, people migrate from the area with high population to area with low population where there is no pressure for resources. For example, people are moving from Kilimanjaro to other parts of Tanzania like Morogoro and the Tanga. So this is another impact of having the large number of people. People will migrate from those areas that have high population up to the area that have the low resources and this is contributed to the pressure of the social that area where they migrate and live. Another is poor housing and health services. Overpopulation bring about is a problem of housing whereby the houses are poor, overcrowded. This problem is so common in Dar es Salaam, especially Manzese, Gareko, Ilala Buguruni and Vingungu. There are those are some of areas which have having the poor housing due to the large number of people. Even the health service is not well organized due to the fact that there is a large number of people. So the, the government don't have the ability to control the capacity of number of people in the certain area. Another is declining the life expectancy. The areas that you have, the, this is another among the impacts of having the large number of people. The life expectancy might decline because of the problem like poor health services. If the, Health services is not good to, to, for the people. Automatically, the life expectancy will be low. For example, in the developing countries, the, 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 the sector of health is not well organized. So there is a problem of life expectancy to be low compared to those areas that is developed like China. The life expectancy tends to be high because there is well organized services like healthy, housing and etc. So another is slowing down of industrial growth. This occurs due to the unskilled laborers and the poor market. Since majority of people have poor income and also people can't work properly due to poor health. As you know that in order to work properly you are supposed to be physically fit. So if you are not physically fit you can't do anything. So those sectors like industry will decline since there is a shortage of laborers who will go to engage there. That is another impact of overpopulations. Another is increasing in crimes. Why increase in crimes? In increasing crimes it will remain as a as the impact of having the large number of people because if there is a large number of people in the certain area, automatically the problem of unemployment will take place there. So if there is unemployment there, automatically other people will tend to engage in crimes for searching of their needs. As a result of unemployment, instances of crimes increase. For example, in the area of high population, theft and killing are common. As you see that the areas, those have the large number of people. These things to occur is very, is very normal to those areas that have the high large number of people. Killings are very common to these areas so due to the numbers of crimes. Another is, is the spread of disease. Since there is a large number of people, the disease will spread easily. Because when the population is high, disease spread very rapidly. AIDS, AIDS has been a common problem due to the prostitution because Simply because the area those having the large number of people, there are different behaviors that will be practiced there, like prostitution. As you see that prostitution, especially to those areas that is in towns and centers, this behavior is, is, is practiced. So if there is a problems like this of prostitution, automatically the diseases like AIDS will occur. So that is another 
impact of overpopulation. Increase of beggars. Beggars also increase due to unemployment, and this is a common problem in Dar es Salaam. Numbers of beggars will increase if there is overpopulation in certain areas due to the large number of unemployment. If there is a large number of unemployment, automatically also numbers of beggars will increase since many people are jobless. So will engage, to, so will become to be beggars and act as a problem for them. So this is another impact of overpopulation. Overpopulation causes a problem of congestion in the street, hospitals, schools, and the transport. This becomes possible because those services will not be able to handle the number of people. Those, for example, those health centers like hospitals will not be able to handle the number of people, so will act as a problem due to the occurrence of congestion in those areas. So, let us now see problems that is occur due to the population population problem population problem is uh, underdeveloped in the underdeveloped can here we're going to see those problems of populations in the underdeveloped country the first problem is low level of technology which inhibit agriculture efficiency and the development of industry because of the low technology in these countries, resources are not using property, property and the traditional method are still predominant. As we know that in our, in our countries that is in developing way, there is no technology. So automatically the different sectors will decline since we have no technology which we can apply in order to run those sectors. For example, agriculture will not be practiced effectively due to the low technology. Another problem is underpopulation is another problem in some area. Good resources are lying idle due to the low populations and can utilize those resources, for example, Brazil and Congo. Those areas that do not have the large number of people, the land tend to be idle because there is no, there is no people who will engage to live there or to practice the different activities there. So this is another problem of the population in the underdeveloped country. Another is unbalanced development. This is manifested by the imbalance in the level of development between rural and the urban. As we know that urban there is a large number of people while in rural there is a small number of people. So there is no balance. So if there is no balance, automatically development will differ from urban to rural. The urban area are more developed than the rural area as a result of difference in the technology levels. As we see that technology also tend to differ from those who are living at the urban and those who are living at the rural. Rural areas are characterized by low level of technology. In rural areas there are low level of technology which lead to the poor production. Another problem is the poor food supply due to the agriculture performance. As you know that there are some of the countries in developing countries who they face the problems of of hunger due to the fact that there is a low production in, in agriculture. As you know that many countries in, develop, in developing countries depend on agriculture as an economy. So poor food supply due to the agriculture performance. Agriculture performed badly automatically also the food will become poor and shorted. Agri agriculture crisis has been caused by low level of technology overpopulation and a population in poor agriculture policies on practicing agriculture poor capital availability as you know that capital is everything if you want to do anything and succeed it you should have the capital so you can't run agriculture sector if you don't have the capitals poor transport also transport is among the economic sector that go perpendicular with the agriculture uh, agriculture sector so they interact to each other poor education services lead to mass scale illiterates also in the developing countries there are large number of illiterates so they do not have the skills and the knowledge that will apply into different activities in order to run their lives so act as a another kind of problem also food crisis is caused by restlessness, restlessness of the people like the refugees marginalization of the women in the ownership of the land and etc also, another problem there is a low life expectancy. As we know that the developing countries, the life expectancy tend to differ from those developed countries. Our, 
our life expectancy is low in developing countries, while in the developed countries the life expectancy is high. Why it tend to differ? Why in developing countries there are low life expectancy, while in developed countries there are high life expectancy? It's simply because our services is not good in developing countries compared to the areas that is developed. You can't compare the health sector of Tanzania's country compared to the health sector in, in China or Japan. The, those countries are those countries that are developed in the areas of health. So this is among another problem of the population in the developing country. Also there is a housing problem, especially in the urban area, where there is a overpopulation. Now we see in Dar es Salaam and this is there. There is a problem of poor housing due to the large number of people who are living there. So in the urban area, number of people is too large to accommodate such that some houses are overcrowded and some other people are homeless. As you see that there are other people who do not have even homes, so they live in the streets because they, they are homeless. Rural urban migration has greatly added to the magnitude of the problem. Many people tend to migrate from rural to urban and this increased number at the urban area. So they act as a cause of the problem at the town's areas. Another problem of population in the developing in the develop in the developing countries like there is a low per capita income since many people are not employed. So if people are not employed automatically the problem of low per capita income will take place. So due to the fact that the economic sectors are fewer than the number of people we have in developing country we have the shortage of economic sectors compared to the number of people so and this takes place especially in the towns area in rural area poor production due to the use of low technology has contributed to the predominance of lower income per capita so even as we see in rural areas there is a people who are, who have low per capita income because and the activities they do not have any kind of skills and knowledge that will apply in order to run their economic sectors like agriculture due to poverty they don't have money to buy fertilizers seeds and etc another is problem related to the population in the developing country is the population is migratory Restless people, especially the young, are always on movement to urban area leading to the road of depopulation and the culture decline. As you see that in the, in the developing countries, the young people tend to migrate from urban to rural for searching of life. So when they tend to migrate from rural to urban, automatically there is a occurrence of shortage of labor in the rural areas. If there is a shortage of labor in the Rural areas automatically also the agriculture sector will decline since there is no people who will engage and have and having the force to conduct the agriculture for development. So this is another kind of the problem. So let us see solution to the population problem in the underdeveloping country. So now we are going to see the solutions. How should what should be done in order to solve those kind of the problem? First one, there should be infusion of capital, probably in form of regional aid, to finance development in this country. So the government need to get the financial aids from the de developed countries in order to run our economic sectors like industry and etc. So we need to gain the foreign aid. Another is there should be improvement of marketing system both locally and internationally by giving good prices to the farmer. As we know that there is a pharmacy in, our de in the developing countries, they produce their products but they, they do not have the market of to sell it. So the government should ensure that there is improvement of market both internal and external for supporting farmers to sell their product. Another educating farmers and in, in Inculcating in them modern skills of production. So, as we know, that is the, the government should transfer the knowledge and the skills to the farmers on how to apply the best ways or methods that will be applied in those activities like agriculture in order to have in the good production. So, people 
will should be provided the education in order to know the skills so let us see another point in order to control the this is a problem of populations the government should endure to improve transport and communication so as to open up the area which are underpopulated so as we know that transport is among the driving force that will force the economy of any certain country so if the transport is improved automatically also the development will take place there so in develop in country the transport sector should be improved in order to have in the development so another point is the, there should be control of population by keeping low and encouraging the decline in birth rate so this is another solution that can be used in order to to to, to ensure the populations to keep population in a balance so by encouraging those laws and the regulations like declining birth rate through the family programs and the delay in marriage so the government should encourage laws and the policy in order to control the number of people increase another is formulating and reinforcing strict and practicable policies and economic and social development policies should be focused on enabling people to utilize resources rational there by organizing the activities while considering the necessity of improving the environment so also the government should reinforce or to restrict profitable policies for the purpose of economic and social development and those acti and those economic activities will be enabled to see the improvings of the environment the, the environment should be considered for the for the purpose of who? the lives of the people as we know that when keep the environment safe, automatically the life of people also will be good. So, after finishing our discussions, let us now see the questions that need us to briefly explain the effects of overpopulation. As we said earlier, we have been discussed and we see the differences effect of having the overpopulation. So, now, my fellow, my dear students, now you are supposed to go and read what are those effects that related to the overpopulation and we will proceed with the, the next sessions. I will going to pass through those answers that will provide to these questions. Thank you and see you later.